going on everybody crazy dog 99 back once again monday morning the aftermath of a crazy wild card weekend yeah man so you know it started off literally with a bang as the kansas city chiefs took down the houston texans 30 to nothing and that game pretty much you know we knew what was going to happen from the start, as Niall Davis of the Kansas City Chiefs returned the opening kickoff 106 yards to the house to start the scoring, and the Chiefs never looked back. I thought maybe t the Texans were going to... Uh, I thought the Texans were going to give them a fight. I thought this game was going to be a high-scoring affair for both teams. I was half right. Because I thought, I I knew Kansas City was going to score points. I thought Houston was going to make it a game. But nope, they didn't. <laughs> 30 to nothing. Thanks for coming, Houston. See you next year. Probably with a different quarterback. Because Hoyer sucks. Oh, man. Burping all over the place, bruh. So, you know, after that very boring game, I was very excited to watch the Bengals-Steelers game. And, again, Steelers pretty much led the entire game. And I thought, at halftime, okay, this game is going to be very good. It's going to get very chippy. Like it always hit, like a, like a typical Bengals-Steelers rivalry game. More or less the typical AFC North rivalry game. So, I was right. It got very chippy at times. At, you know, I thought there was going to be some big fights. And there was almost uh, one or two fights that happened at some point in the game. So, you know, to fast forward a little bit. Cincinnati scored. AJ McCarron to AJ Green. What a connection there. AJ to AJ. Put them up 16 to 15, and and I immediately thought, okay, here we go. Cincinnati might just win this game, and we're going to hear about it on Twitter and YouTube and all these other social media websites because the last time the Bengals won a playoff game, they did not have social media. I can only imagine how they trash talked then. But I thought, yep, this is it. Cincinnati's going to win this game. And on the ensuing drive for the in the ensuing possession slash drive for the Steelers, they were, which, again, they were driving, but Big Ben made a mistake, threw a pick to Vontaze Perfect, and that pretty much sealed the deal for me. I thought, yeah, they're winning this game. All Cincinnati has to do, run the ball the safe way, kill clock, Make Pittsburgh use their timeouts, and then knee it, and then pfft, maybe get one, one or two first downs. Depends. I think they had over a little over two minutes left, so they probably have to run the ball quite a lot. You know, run the ball, kill some clock, and then go go home with the victory. Well, no one told Pittsburgh because ensuing. Literally the first play of the next drive for for Cincinnati, they fumble it. Jeremy Hill looks like he busted a one wide open. Fumbles the ball, ball comes out. I thought he was actually going to score with it, but no, he didn't score. Um. So Pittsburgh gets the ball back with a little over a minute left, and I thought, yep, looks like Pittsburgh can do it. Pittsburgh just might win this game. They can come back. They have time to do it. Never give Big Ben time to come back. So, you know, game's going on. Pittsburgh's driving like they always do. Big Ben has that thing for making dramatic last few minute drives to win the game. After all, he did it against my Browns so many times. So... They're going down the, the driving, about a little over a minute left. Throws a 
Like literally a little over a minute left. Maybe even less than a minute. And then uh throws a pass to Antonio Brown. It falls incomplete. But there's a flag on the play. They get, I believe it was Pac-Man Jones for a hit on a defenseless receiver, I think it was. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one, but I mean he pretty much smashed Antonio Brown into the ground, gave him a concussion. And then they went then the Bengals some of the Bengals got into it with uh I think it was Joey Porter of the Steelers. And that drew another flag. So literally, without catching a pass, the Beng the Steelers gained thirty yards. So Tomlin says screw it. And uh kicks a field goal. Puts them up by two points. The Bengals have probably one more drive in them. I thought, okay, you know, Bengals can probably tie it and or, well, win it, most likely. So, yeah, Pittsburgh stopped them. So, uh, you know, Cincinnati fans, <laughs> I know they're disappointed. And I thought that was going to be the craziest game of the weekend, to be honest. But I was wrong on so many levels. Because the very next day, yesterday, was the Vikings and the Seahawks. Now, this game was the lowest scoring, which I expected it to be. When it's frigid like that, you're not going to score 30 or 40 points. No. Can't throw the ball. Although, uh, I'll, give it, I'll give credit to the um, Vikings. They threw the ball a lot. And they were successful with it. So, you know, again, since the Seahawks, the Seahawks are up 10 to 9 with a little under a minute left. Vikings are driving. They're getting down closer to the end zone. Bridgewater threw a good-looking pass to uh, Kyle Rudolph to put them in position. And yeah, I'm thinking, yep, they got this. Viking, Vikings might be advancing. Unless something stupid happens. And on Twitter, someone said he's going to probably miss it. And sure enough, 27-yarder. That's a chip shot for about 98% of the field goal kickers in the NFL. And even college, for that matter. Maybe even high school. <laughs> and Blair Walsh shanked it left. Some were saying it's because the laces were in and not out. And everyone knows the laces need to be out because it's an awkward surface for your foot to kick. And one little wrong, wrong maneuver can send the ball flying the wrong way. And which it literally went flying the wrong way. It went way left instead of, which is shades of what happened. I think it was uh, against the Falcons in the 90s. I can't, remember which, I can't remember which year it was, but same thing happened. Wyatt left. So, yeah, that's how that went. Then came this... I must have steal it again. God. Packers, Redskins. Now in this game, granted, I did pick the skins to win. Because I <laughs> skins to win. I had almost rhyme there. Mm. So... Looked like a very good game. Washington definitely came out to play in the first half. They scored 18 points. And I I knew Green Bay was going to answer. I just knew it. Just the way Aaron Rodgers is. He'll answer sooner or later. Hopefully sooner. <laughs> so I was right. They came back and scored 35 unanswered points. Won the game 35 to 18. So now, in the next round, it will be Kansas City facing New England and Pittsburgh and Denver in the AFC side. And on the NFC side, it's what I call the Bandwagon Bowl featuring the Carolina Panthers and the Seattle Seahawks. 
And then on the other side, you got Arizona and Green Bay. And I will be posting my predictions for those games. Most likely on Wednesday, and if not, then on Saturday before the game. Alright. So, um, I'll leave it at that. Crazy Dog 99. I'm always 100% Dog Pound. Even though we're not in the playoffs. We haven't been in the playoffs since 2002. <laughs> Sad. But true. Oh my god, I rammed again. Hey, look at that. So, uh, I'll leave it. At, I gotta get out of here. Got things to do today. Alright. Peace.